But we have Mount Rushden um, yeah. because we like to know what people think of their British wrestling icons. So, Love who it. would you have, past, present, etc., on your Mount Rushden of British wrestlers? I think number one, um, Rollable Rocco is actually one of my all-time favourites. Professional wrestling worldwide. Um, so he is most definitely on there. Um, you smile. I see a big smile there. So uh, as you can tell, you're Good a big choice. fan. Great pick. Black Tiger. So I don't know. Somehow, like, yeah. So I'd mentioned before Eddie Guerrero as being one of my favourites as well. I think it's, it's interesting. There's something about that Black Tiger persona. <laughs> that both wrestlers are fantastic. If I, man, in another world, I don't know if that will happen. But yeah, I'd, if I went to Japan and there was, I, I'd, I'd push to be a Black Tiger because because of that history is so important to me. Such my biggest uh, inspirations in those two. The way they work, the pair of them, it's quite interesting. So I'm going on a tangent now, but the way that the both of them work, you'll see they're kind of like on their toes and they're hunched and they have their hands forward like this. And if you watch my matches, I, I I am the same. I think it's a good way to be in the ring, like always on the pr- always like prowling and ready to pounce like a like a like a angry tiger. Um, they both like a black tiger. There you go. <laughs> they both emulate this. Uh, but anyway, the point is, yes, Rollable Rocco. I never met him. Uh, I'm gutted about that. I uh, met many of the wrestling legends from the UK, but I've never met him or trained under him, but I've studied his tape at Nauseam, and I, I'm a big, big fan of Rollable Rocco. Great choice. Um, number two, same, so I'll do two old and two new, if, if in a way. Yeah, it's all good. Um, um, it's Dynamite Kid, man. Like, he completely revolutionised, you know, wrestling worldwide you know, tragic f- things happened also because of that but r- r- bell to bell in the ring um he was phenomenal um he was phenomenal and um one some of my favorite matches I, I never forget the first time I saw uh, dynamite kid and um and and tiger mask the obviously I wasn't alive when they happened but when i first saw the tape of it you know it was like you know if you go from watching wwe and then you see this you're like wow i need to do this this is super cool um and you can see it there's like a there's like a knock-on effect in wrestling it's like before dynamite post dynamite (laughs) you can see it right yeah Yeah. as one of the things as i say we just had Stephen Bell on, who told us so much about uh, both Dynamite and Davey. It was just incredible, and uh, he was so knowledgeable on so many different subjects. But, yeah, we highlighted the Tiger Mask, and that changed the guard. (laughs) Right? Like, was it... I'll go and watch the episode, but, I mean, is there any, like, particular thing that he mentioned about about Dynamite that you thought was stood out to you? For me, it was about um, his youth in Wigan, um, when they were talking about that and um, growing up and doing the training at the snake pit. Hard, right? It was hard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, the, the, and then moving on to Canada Stampede, uh, mm. that was something I hadn't <clears throat> previously known. I'd known about his Japan. I'd known he'd worked for Cal- uh, Calgary Stampede, but not for as much as he had done. Mm. So have you seen the tapes of him and Brett in, in, in Stampede? And so I have. Yeah, great, fantastic. Yeah. Again, like good stuff. Speed, um, the speed they go through things is just phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. I like. I always like to watch. I always watch a lot of old tape around the world, different time zones, like um, time periods. And there's always lots to be p- to pick from. It's and um, and that's a period and a time that is good to pick from as well. That. Um, so moving on with the ra- rush turn, yeah. Rush turn, um, yeah. We'll go two modern, uh, and the next one I'll, I'll say is someone I mentioned earlier, which is uh, it's just Rockstar Spud, Spud, Jake Maverick, James Curtin, as he is called now. Well, it's his real name, but um, yeah, him. I, I mentioned before, I trained under Barry Cheryl Lumbus, uh, who ran SAS, and he also trained Spud. And 
you know um i was helping out at these shows and, and the young trainee at the time and spud was the best wrestler in the country in my opinion at that time and he was miles ahead of anyone else uh, because of the training that, he, that barry you know passed on to him the knowledge that barry passed on to him and yeah he was fantastic man he was and he still is. I mean, like everything he's ever, the thing is, is like he was at this other st- level, in my opinion, at, at, above everyone else in the country at that time. It, it, it's easy to look at that now and be like, oh, that's cool, whatever. But like to, to be, for everyone to be a certain level and for you to be above, push above that and lead the pack, like is something special. On top of that, to be the height that he is and do that is incredible to then take that and go beyond the shores of this country to go over to and break America and be in TNA when, when that wasn't really happening before at this time, again, revolution. And he didn't just do it. He conquered it. You know, he, he, he owned a lot of those TV shows. He, he, he was the most important guy on the, on the, the TNA show. He was the guy stealing the, he was the main thing you wanted to watch, not just because I knew him and I was a fan or whatever, but, and got to train with him, but like because at, the crowd was there for it. Him and EC3, him and Matt Hardy, he stole this stuff. I had this story about him. Um, I wasn't at the show, but um, they did a, a show. It was in the UK, so it was, you know, but I think like Kurt Angle and Sting and someone else are in the ring and Spud, and the whole building is just chanting for Spud. The whole, I think it's Wembley Arena, all chanting for Spud. He is that good. And when he went to WWE, they gave him a managerial role. He smashed it. They gave him the 24-7 role, uh, comedy really thing. He smashed it. Uh, they fired him, in, and he turned that into such a strong thing that ended up in him getting rehired. And he gets fired again, and he comes back with phenomenal content. To be that level of, of, of a professional and a as a, a professional in any industry and in this industry and at his height and all the rest of it, the guy is an absolute legend. Oh, fair play. I Sorry definitely for agree with that. Uh, no, <laughs> not at all. Yeah. I've really loved his work in TNA. I thought it was <clears throat> absolutely great. And when he, he finally got the match against EC3, I was just, oh God, it was fantastic. <laughs> That's what wrestling's about. Hmm. Uh, yeah, he um, helped pave the way for the next lot of British guys because he uh, was on the original, what was it, British Boot Camp, and then he pushed for British Boot Camp to be bigger the next year, and there were so many, uh, was it, I think there were about 12 different talents the next time around. Yeah, I think it was Mark Andrews and that on the next one. Yeah. So there you go. This is what the business is about. It's not. Uh, it's not just about getting your stuff in and getting yourself over. It's about improving business for everyone and opening the doors and opportunities for everyone and and and, and being on a, on a show and in a segment and making everyone look good you know um so yeah he is definitely on the for me on that on that mountain and the, and the next one I'll, I'll say another modern one a guy who um who i uh met as a kid when i was a kid wrestling in this industry um he started off underneath a tiger mask. He was called the Tiger Kid. And we wrestled a couple of times in uh, when we were younger. I went away from the business because, you know, things that happened in my life uh, and other opportunities that come up. But, uh, but like a young Nino, Brian, he uh, was focused to it. He didn't, he didn't get distracted by the drink and the, and the drugs and the, the ladies and all the rest of it. He... He he was true to it and he and he stuck to it and he and the scene wasn't good at the time, but what this man did is make the scene something. And I'm talking about Pete Dunn. He um he was, you know, he's a couple of years younger than me, and uh yeah, he just he had it, you know, and uh he the scene was not great at this point. And I believe, you know, yes with a group of friends, but, you know, he really was the driving force in, in a lot of ways in, in starting attack and bringing about British strong style, this indie style into the UK, which led, you could say in many ways, like that 
starting Attack Pro Wrestling and the shows that they're putting on there created the whole burst again of, of indie wrestling in the in the United Kingdom, which then led to progress starting and doing what they did, which then led to NXT UK and all these things. And this is you don't realize sometimes the little things you do and the hard work you do and, and the, the snowball effect it has. Um, so again, for that reason, not about how good you are in the ring, bell to bell, but what you do for the business. I think Pete Dunn is, has to be there. 